So I grew up in the Waikato um, and I always made things out of paper and um, explored ideas that way but I never really drew or painted when I was a kid um, apart from the you know standard stuff at school which was pretty um, slim back then. <laughs> uh, I think you know maybe and it, you know, as when I left school, I went to, to to study engineering. So the way that that teaches you to think about space um, informs my art. Um, maybe not at the outset, but definitely now. Yeah. Well, I guess firstly, I probably when I start, I think about what I'm going to put it on. Like the surface is really important to me. And in fact, I think unless there is a surface, then I don't normally start making anything. <laughs> Um, I usually think about how I want the surface to be before I start generating the kind of the images or the drawings for that surface. But in terms of making a, an image, um, I usually play with making things in three dimensions first. And as you mentioned, I'm currently making them in plastic, which is like a see-through, this printing plate actually, that I can fold and kind of make little spatial ideas. Um, and kind of look at them and turn them around and you know fold them some more sometimes they break but they turn into something interesting that um, inhabits space which is kind of what drives the drawings and then the paintings I'm interested in that tension between those two things like the flat surface it is a painting and then how folding a flat surface takes up space like so it's kind of that tension between thinking about space depicting it making illusory space but on a flat surface you know like that tension between is it something that inhabits space or is it flat is kind of what intrigues me I guess. What I would usually say is um, that my painting is a kind of a serious but playful um, exploration of how we talk about space, how we construct space, how we look at space um, and that I like that to feel kind of quite immersive I suppose you know like I like you to look at a painting and feel like you're sort of looking into it um, you know so that it might seem flat but feel like it might unfold it kind of makes you feel like you are seeing space you know something that describes space well I do look a lot at architecture um, but I guess lots of influences over the years but you know maybe like Rothko, um, Robert Mangold, people who did work with colour in a, in a kind of structural way and although Rothko paintings are very ambient they are also quite structural um, and thinking about that immersive quality as well where you can just stand and look at something and kind of be absorbed in it hopefully. I see this space as kind of sinking into the colour, like I like the colour to kind of, you know, different colours actually kind of take up different amounts of space, so they operate quite differently. Um, and the colour, I don't actually normally plan the colour before I've made the drawing, so I'll make the drawing and then I'll think about what colour's going to kind of unpack that drawing the best if you know what I mean like some of them feel flatter some of them feel more deep and that's to do with the drawing but it's also to do with the colour um, yeah I just like them to be immersed um, more than kind of a flat drawing on a surface and I started exploring how I could have the painting be on the surface but that what was behind is kind of included either just with the light getting there or us actually visually seeing some of what is behind the surface. Um, and so three or four years ago, I started exploring how that might work in a practical sense, you know, like what materials I might use. Um, and so a lot of things had to kind of change at that point to make that surface work. I guess it's always interesting to see where it can go next like to just try and unpack it further and see what that is you know like um, I don't think when I started out as a painter that I could have ever imagined where it would end up and that I find that interesting yeah